And just then, two Americans from Illinois have been released after being held hostage by Hamas. Judith Renan and her 17-year-old daughter Natalie were met at the border of the Gaza Strip by Israeli authorities, then reunited with their family. And meanwhile, the White House says the U.S. must deepen its support for both Israel and Ukraine in their respective conflicts. President Biden is now urging Congress to approve funding that would be, quote, vital for America's national interest and security, in addition to calling for humanitarian aid in that region. ABC's Inez de la Quintera has more. The Israel Defense Force has confirmed to ABC News that two Americans, a mother and a daughter, who were being held hostage by Hamas have been released and are currently with the Red Cross. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visiting with IDF soldiers as the Israel Defense Forces prepare for a ground invasion against Hamas militants in Gaza. Israel continuing its armed response for the terror attack by Hamas militants. At least 1,400 Israelis were killed in the massacre. They can't even identify the bodies, it's so bad. The IDF says Hamas took more than 200 people hostage, families of some of those hostages traveling to the Red Cross in Geneva, pleading for help. Any civilized country should put as much pressure as they can for the release of the hostages. In an address last night, President Biden saying America stands firmly with Israel as well as Ukraine, two U.S. allies at war. We're facing an inflection point in history. If we walk away from Ukraine, if we turn our backs on Israel, it's just not worth it. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes into Gaza continue. The Hamas-run Palestinian Health Ministry says more than 3,700 people in Gaza have been killed, millions displaced from their homes, trapped without food, water, medicine, or electricity. And we went to the hospital. They were bombing above our heads. We were just terrified. terrified. We didn't know if we will reach the place like safely or not. Pro-Palestinian protests growing around the world, thousands taking to the streets in Yemen, Egypt, Iraq and elsewhere demanding a ceasefire in Israel's assault. The barbaric attack by Hamas uh, need to be condemned, but I've also said they cannot be a pretext for a collective punishment of the Palestinian people. The IDF says the two hostages released were received at the border of the Gaza Strip, then taken to a military base at the center of the country where their families were waiting for them. In de la Quintera, ABC News, Jerusalem. The U.S. is allowing Israelis to enter the country for 90 days or less without a visa. It's part of the U.S.'s visa waiver program announced late last month, just days before Hamas attacked Israel. The Department of Homeland Security started the program yesterday, not November 30th like originally planned. Homeland Security says Israelis using the waiver program have to register with the electronic system for travel authorization to find out whether they are eligible. That process may take up to 72 hours. Anyone without a passport must apply for a U.S. visa. Hundreds of Americans were recently evacuated by ship to the island of Cyprus. I'm constantly on edge, and uh, I can't do that to my kids. I can't let them live like this. And many flights in and out of Israel remain canceled. However, the first government-chartered flight from Israel arrived in Florida on Sunday.